In my childhood, I used to love Beyblades. The Galman Metal was my partner in crime. We would play clashing them, making really loud noises that as a kid only fueled my imagination to something comparable to the TV show. Expectation, excitement, and hope was what I felt in every single match. Now, translate all those emotions, the customization, the speed, and the battles to a PlayStation game, adding on top special powers, cool beast moves, and a tournament against the characters of the show. We could have had something special, but we got this. Welcome to the quest for the worst, the series where I pick a subpar game and see if it deserves to be called the worst game of them all. Drop a like and subscribe for more PlayStation Madness. Now let's... Beyblade is an action game released in 2001, developed by Weebitch, a subsidiary of Takata which was closed surprisingly quick after the release of this game. Beyblade rocks an impressive 4.4 out of a 10 in movie games. As we start, we get to pick between a girl or a boy and a Beyblade. Once in the menu, we're fully thrown into all the aspects of the game. Customize contains your Beyblades and the shop, we'll talk later about these. As for gameplay, we have the tournament in which you play against the computer in rounds of 4 points all the way until the final. First problem, they couldn't even care to name the first characters we battle against. Our opponents, Generic Blader A, Nerd Blader B, and obviously, School Bully, Blader C. The gameplay is identical of its real-life depiction. You spin the Beyblade and watch until something happens. In reality, you do have a very small opportunity of control. First, you get to decide your spins per minute or SPM. The harder you rip it, the more difficult it will be to control and the longer it will spin. The lower the SPM, the easier it will be to move. You can also slightly alter the angle of the movement by pressing the D-pad. This feels awkward, as it will change the direction, but not where you imagine. I found out that it's easier to win matches as long as you're not trying to control the Beyblade. Another unexplained mechanic happens at the clash. By pressing X the moment it happens, if done successfully, you will avoid damage and your LP will get 5 points. This meter will allow you to summon a special beast attack. These range from side attacks to defensive stances. Unfortunately, the only notable thing besides the sprite is that you do minimal amount of damage to your enemy's HP, which is practically infinite. I have never been able to destroy another's Beyblade. It is much easier and likely to stop spinning or ring out. The more you play, the more evident it will become that you have no chance against them. When you win, it feels like luck, and when you lose, you feel like there's nothing you could have done. This game has a weird sensation of hopelessness, awfully depressing for a child's game. So, what do we do to start winning? Well, we need to customize. For a complete Beyblade, you will need to spend around 600 points. That's a lot of money. Each match is around 5 minutes, and let's say you win every match, that's 10 points per win. You need 60 wins, or 5 hours playing. Because winning is mostly luck, making it longer than 5 hours, just to buy one full Beyblade. I had to read a few guides because I couldn't figure out how to win consistently. The guide was talking about 3 complete Beyblades, focusing on offense, balance and defense to defeat the whole tournament. That's a whopping 1800 points. That's 15 hours of playing, assuming you only win. I made a short on how to build the best and cheapest Beyblade in order to beat the game. I will link it by the end. Hopefully, it saves someone from the pain I went through. If the tournament wasn't enough torture, then you can invite a friend to join the free battles. This mode allows you to play as the characters from the anime. However, no points are awarded or enjoyment is felt. Once free battles are done with, you can say goodbye to your ex-friend and to all the content of the game. Beyblade Let It Rip for the PlayStation is disappointing, with barely anything worth playing through, no story to speak of, Controls that are as obtuse as they are useless, you will find yourself questioning why you're even trying, if winning has nothing to do with what you do. The most painful part is, it's more likely for you to win by the enemy going crazy a ring out, than skillfully using the tools the game provides to win the matches. The customization options are nice, yet they lack any description, so most of the time you don't even know what you're getting. 
With any noticeable differences on the Beyblade's handling, there's little to no incentive to upgrade, so why go through the 60 matches necessary to do so? And for the sake of argument, let's say you go through hell and back to upgrade and win the tournament. What do you get out of it? Nothing. No new unlockable, no new enemies, no new abilities. To finish, I will read what Emperor Justinian I from GameFAQ had to say back in 2004. Do you want the manifestation of hell along with an agony that not even touch you? Heard the shout. All bundle up in a CD Plus case for the low price of $14.99. Look no further. But what you want is all in a relatively unknown PlayStation game known by the title of Beyblade. It's guaranteed to make you wretch, grab your head and repeatedly hit it on your controller to make the pain end. And convince even the most optimistic of people that there is no hope for humanity. Mm. If it doesn't, well, you either must have plenty of cash to burn or you somehow actually like this game. Know that the latter is impossible. Seeing as it's the former, I recommend you pick up all the copies you see and burn them. Every person you save from playing this despicable game is a person who might yet have the chance to see light. Thank you for watching until the end. Please hit that like button and the subscribe. You will make my day. Check my other stuff. That'd be cool. Until the next time, I sign out.